Lord Jesus. It's the day of ascension. It's the day to climb heights. It's the day to ascend into the height. It's the time to ascend into height. It's the day for heighting. It's the time for heighting in the spirit. It's the time you are in the season for heighting. You need to know that you are in the season to go high. You are in the season to come up. You are in the season to height. You are in the season to height. I will help you with sight so you can hide. I will help you with sight so you can hide. I will instruct you for the season for height. I want to instruct you for the season for height. I want to teach you the things to do to height up. I want to help you to see so you can hide. I want to help you to see so you can hide. I want to bring to you consecration for height. I want to bring to you consecration for height. I want to teach you consecration for height. It is a time to height. It's the season for height up. It's the season for height up. It's the season for height up. I come with waters. I come with waters for refreshing. I come with waters to refresh you because you have to go up height. 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 Yield to instruction to come up. It's the time for height. It's the season to come up height. It's the season for come up high. I have measured a new height in this season. I want you to come up there. See you, the Lord. Amen. 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 Can you greet the person sitting next to you and say welcome to the meeting of the church? Yeah. Can we open our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 55 this morning? And let's start from Isaiah chapter 55. Um, so it says... Oh, everyone, open your Bibles. If the projector is not working, or you didn't come to church with your Bibles. So let's open, yeah. So, oh, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and hit what is good and let your soul delight itself in what abundance. So you see here the Lord calling for people to come and drink and come and eat and not with the physical cash but there's actually something that we use to transact in the spirit. And so you might wonder is it, is it physical water? Is it uh, natural bread, no, you can see here. The way we buy, the way we come to buy waters and the way we come to buy bread is the last, um, the last, the last section after the question mark. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in what abundance. So the way we eat when it comes to the things of the spirit is by listening. Say listening. So if you are not listening, if you are not hearing his voice, you are not eating, you are not drinking, then you are not coming to the waters. So our purchasing power in the spirit is our ability to sit down at the feet of the master and listen to his words and hear the voice that is saying. As we sit down and hear his words, as we sit under the administration of the spirit, then there is something that happens to us. Our soul is actually feeding. And then our soul can delight itself in abundance. So that is what we use for transaction. Is how much you can eat. Is how much you are willing to feed. That determines how much water or how much bread you can actually get from the Lord. But the table is ready. Tell us, say the table is ready. And we are in such a season that there is so much abundance of food. Say abundance of food. Abundance. abundance of food. And when I talk about the abundance of food, I'm talking about the words that the Lord is bringing to us in this season. There's abundance of food. And so it now depends on our own attitude to know how much we can take. Say, that's why I said, oh, come. Come by. So tell neighbor, say, come by. I can't hear you. Say, come by. Are you feeling cold? Come by. And you buy, with your, you buy with your hunger. You buy with your desire to want to sit down under the ministration of the word. And so I just want to encourage us that um, we must keep hearing. Say we must keep hearing. 
We must keep hearing his voice. And we must not be familiar with his voice. Say, don't be familiar with his voice. You know, um, as I came here this morning and we were worshiping, my heart was filled with so much joy. And why was I, why was there so much joy? All of a sudden, it just turned on me that, you know, um, in this season, the Lord is raising a company of people that are, that are actually seeking the Lord, not for the physical things he's going to give them. The truth of the is that people can pay any price for any physical thing. If you tell, if you tell people that, okay, um, we're going to be distributing a million naira each um, for, uh, to everyone, and they tell you to come to maybe Sambisa for it, you see how many people will turn up. I'm telling you. People will still risk it, and they will come. They will not mind. They say, eh? One minute, they will say, we know what time we will go. We will know we organize vigilant. People will do everything, you know. That's how much you can. And you see, most, um, most prayer, I'm sorry to say, um, not because I'm condemning anybody, most prayer mountains, most um, gatherings, big, large gatherings of believers that we have in this time, and you see people trooping in, in, in numbers. It's not really because they really want to know God. Many of them are just going because they have friends, they have things that they want God to do for them. And many they collect the thing like this, Umagbejani. That's all. So you so you see people going, you say, ah, you have believers. They are just going because of what they are going to um, receive, what the physical things. What are those things? Money, breakthrough, houses, businesses, promotion, and all the ones that have um, riches and wizards chasing them, they want them to die. People that don't have kids, you know, and it's good. And God knows that we need all those things. But beyond that, say beyond that, beyond that. there is something more that God wants to give us. Was it Penna that was crying and was crying and was saying that she did not have a child? I know what the and the husband, this is a told him that I might know more to more more to you than ten sons. So the Lord is saying to so many believers today, I might know more than you that than the promotion, than the deliverance, than the child. So there's something more than having children. There's something more than having promotion. There's something more than having deliverance. That thing is God himself. Say God himself. And that's the greatest thing any soul can attain on earth. Amen. Amen. So I was so excited. One of the reasons I was excited, of course, I was thinking about Believers Convention, and I was like, just come to think about it. I can see thousands of people that will be coming for this meeting, and they're not coming because of those normal things I've, I've, I've counted. You don't understand. They're not going, you know, people will live for a whole one week, a whole one week, and the reason why people are going is not because of um, car, houses, you know, those physical things, but just to know God, say to know God. That is Isaiah 2 being fulfilled. People come in to want to learn God. Abi, why are you going to convention? Want to go, want to know his will, want to know what is this eternal life thing about. I want to know God. It's not, you know, no. So let, let's say many people shall come and say, come and let us go up. You see, it's not few people. Say many. You know, we've seen Penny prayer mountains and all that with many people flooding there. You know, conventions, people flooding. Imagine when you ask them, I want my least prayer point. Ah, this year, God must do my own, no, my own miracle. You know? And when you talk about that miracle, it's all those physical things. Like I said, those things are good. God knows that we need that. But more than that, say more than that. More than that. There is something more than that, you know, that people, people can, you know, prices that people pay, people travel even all the way out of the country to come for all those kind of meetings. People travel from afar. And now in this season, we are seeing that same thing, you know, replicate. But now, not for the hand of God, but for his face. Yeah. That is a miracle. Say that is a miracle. Yeah. It's a miracle. That, you know, souls will be panting and testing after God and all that. And many people shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. What, what do you want to go and do? He will teach us his ways. What are we going to learn in his ways? And we shall walk. And you know, we are not just only want to walk. Many of us are believing God for grace and strength to do, to walk. I mean, is, that, is, that, is that not your prayer? So can't you see this, this scripture being fulfilled? For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from word Jerusalem. Say many, many people. And so these words have been, and God has just started to, ah, it's 
But you know what? 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 what I'm saying, you know, with the um, with the excitement in people's and you know, you see people so much excitement, and they are like when they ask you what, so normally was still make, was still was still um, making just my water. Yeah, that I seen all of us in my church that we are going for become 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 that become become all of you are going for become. Be, that, of course, she doesn't know. He said become become become. He said I have seen it. All of you become become become. I know if they ask you what, you know, many people they imagine if you are going for I but draft for wow, they don't know, but that's not. We are going to learn his way. That is a miracle. Can you just lift up your hands and thank God? You know, I'm so excited. My heart is so filled with joy that in this season, God is raising a generation of people that are truly seeking God for who he is. That are learning to put God first. You know, he says, seek you first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. That's the first thing. Then what? All other things shall be what? Added. And so I just want to encourage us, you know, as we are going for this meeting, that let this be your priority. Say, let this be your priority. Yes. Of course, there are some other things. You will see your friends, you will farms, you will do all that. But never, never let go of your high on this. That what I'm going to do is to do what? Learn how, learn his ways and how to walk in those things. And so as you are going, you must not, don't let um, the money, the stress of money, you no know, stress of money devotion, stress of queuing for food, stress of anything, don't let it dissuade you from, you know, what you want. Say what I want. What I want. You know, what, you know, just like when God appears to Solomon, say what do you want? You know, don't let any other thing, don't let any other thing serve as a distraction. And you see, Satan doesn't like this so. Because he knows that this is the way we are sent. Say this is the way we are sent. It is in the place of learning to know God, wanting to know God, wanting to walk in his ways and do his way. That is the way we learn out. That is where we get strength to ascend and come above him. So he will not find, knows that now I can't stop you from going to become. He can't stop you from going to what? Become. But he will still want to do things that will want to distract you from, aim, from getting your aim of going to become. So, as you are going, you must guard your heart. Say, guard your heart. You must guard your heart from offense. You must guard your heart from discouragement. It's not because of food that you are going to become. It's not because of comfortable place to sleep that you are going to become. It's not, you understand? You know, you know when you are chasing something, you know, just let your eyes be focused on that thing, that what I am coming to, what I'm going to do. I know there is no price. There is no price. You know, even if you feel, you know, some of you are very beautiful, you wake up maybe, you know, for those of you that like waking up at 8 o'clock and they have to wake you up 3.30 now. See, it is not a sacrifice. See, I don't even consider, like I was telling some said, it is not even a sacrifice. You know, when we are talking about sacrifice, staying in the hostel, queuing for food and all that, I don't consider it as a sacrifice. When it comes to learning his ways, say it is not a sacrifice. So I'm just encouraging your heart, and I want you to be excited, you know. I want you to be excited. No, and the excitement is not because of the exam, hey, you're going to be gone, you know. <laughs> what's the, what's that new song, bread, get, get. you know, it's not all of that. The excitement is because I believe that the Lord is going to reveal himself to us. And not only reveal his way, so not just only that there will be strength to walk in those things. I believe that the voice of the Lord will be echoing strong in that meeting. And you know, we really need, I don't, like I told you, like I told you, I said, the way we hit is by hearing. And you know, one of the, last night, I, I, as, I, as, I, as I lay down, I was meditating, you know, one of the things that came to my mind, you know, in Revelation, I was talking about that woman, Babylon. I said, that woman that sat on the waters, you know, said, Babylon sits on waters, and that waters is what? The soul of men. And that is why we have people the way we are right now. People are so engrossed in the world that it is difficult for them to see God. They can't even think outside the box. There is something, there is a covering cast over the people. And that is that spirit of Babylon. You know, he said, then he said to me, the waters which you saw where, where the allot sits are what? Peoples, multitude, nations, and tongues. So you see the Babylon sitting on people, on souls. So people are just doing it. In my mind, my mind, it's not their mind, it's the harlots. It's that Babylon. Sister, that everything they are doing, all their principles is being generated for that. But you know what is happening in this season? As we are going, as we are hearing God's voice, 
as we are here. And you notice that of recent meetings, ministrations, all of these things have increased. What does, you know what God is doing? God is making, is, you know, is, this Psalm, is this Psalm 25 now that says, the voice of the Lord is upon what? The waters. So what God is also doing is that God is subduing our soul. You know, with his voice. Say with his voice. voice. You know, the are lot has sat so long for on our souls. But in this season, you know how God is, do you know how God is removing her from our souls? It is by his voice. Say by his voice. By his voice. And so by that voice, he's bringing that voice so much that that voice is also submerging our soul. I know by that voice submerging our soul, you know what happens? We also begin to we begin to live his ways. We begin to do his things. We begin to live like him. Can you give me that, that, that scripture? I think it's Psalm... Um, um, Psalm 29. Let's see Psalm 29. I know that's why in this is one of the things you must prioritize the voice. Say the voice. The voice. Hey, I can't hear you. Say The voice. The voice. You know, you must hallow that voice. So that tongue that came said something about hallow, hallow. We must learn to hallow that voice. That is the way they're going to raise us. So that's the way they're going to break us free from the influence of this world. And that is the way, the ways of the Lord will get what's written on our soul. He said, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. I know we have talked about it the other time that the waters are what? Multitude, peoples, and all that. So the God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. Until the voice of the Lord is over waters. If the voice of the Lord is not over you, the Lord, you cannot be Lord over you. If the voice is not over you, then it cannot be Lord over you. So many people that are saying, Lord, Lord, don't say, say, so many people come, come, come and say, um, God, call me Lord, 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 and I say, I do not know you. Because do what they walk in iniquity, they do lawlessness. They don't know his laws. Because his law, it is through his voice that his laws, and those laws are what? His ways. It is through his voice that his laws are communicated. His things are communicated. His ways are communicated through the voice. So if you are not under the economy of his voice, he is not your Lord. So he said, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory of God will turn us. And so because of that, the Lord is over many waters. And let's see the voice. The voice of the Lord is what? Powerful. Say powerful. powerful. So that's why you must not joke with, with words. You must not joke with teachings. You must not joke with when words are coming. No, they say, oh, many, many times, you know, I pray that the Lord will open our eyes to see some of the transactions that takes place in the spirit when understanding is being communicated. And you will see things, and I say the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is what? Full of majesty. It says that voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. You know cedars, those are, they are strong trees, Iroko. You know, not, not those small, small winds cannot break them. I know there are natures that are in man. Natures that are, how many years? 7,000 years deep. That small word, you know, like Pastor, ah, Pastor Friday, God bless you for that teaching on Thursday. Can we, can we appreciate God for that teaching? That teaching was, it was, it was something else. You know, I was telling you something that day that if, there, if you have not used milk, you know that what milk, that, that Satan has gone ahead to walk on our soul in such a way that when everlasting words are coming, that the souls cannot receive it. So he said that what milk comes to do is to prepare the hearts no, he was talking about some hearts that are wayside hearts. There are some hearts that are uh, stony hearts. And what's the third one? Thorns. And he said that it is the enemy that has gone ahead to do all of those things in the heart. So that when the world, the incorruptible seed comes, it will not be able to germinate. So it's not, it, it just struck was said, but when God sends milk, what milk comes to do, it, it starts the preparation. Then the doctrine of Christ comes. And then he starts preparing us so that we can now that which, which is actually the word g -g 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 that God wants to give us. You know, he told us that, he told them that in the beginning, it was not so. Even though it was God that gave them commandment that you can divorce your wife in um, Deuteronomy, he told them that if your wife commits fornication, you should divorce and, get, and give her a bill of divorce. But in the New Testament, when Jesus came, he told them that, see, that thing that God gave you it was because of your states. It was because uh, you, cannot you cannot take my commandments. You cannot take my own principles. So he just lowered it down. Just the same way also when he said, you know, you know, in some was saying that sacrifices and gifts 
I do not do what? I do not desire. But have you forgotten that it was the same person that gave them all the ordinances about sacrifices and gifts? A whole, a whole economy of them doing sacrifice. The Old Testament was built on that. But just about saying that that was not, that was not really my desire. It was just a makeshift thing. He said, but what, do I, what does he really desire? He said, my ears are still open to what? To do your will. So that ear is open to hear his will. So that, that kind of, so what God really desires are people that can hear his will. That can hear his commandments and do it. And walk, you know, but then he could not give them that commandment. So he said, see, all these things about divorce that you are talking about, that are coming, that we will marry this person in the world to come. It's, it's even low. It's because you, you are falling. You cannot take what I really want. So, and you know, and you know there are natures in us that are, like I said, 7,000 deep. Yes, deep in Adam, that we inherited from Adam, that to get those things, that corruption out, it takes the voice of the Lord. Say the voice of the Lord. So it says the voice of the Lord does what? Breaks cedars. Say break cedars. So these are things that happen to us when we sit on the economy of the world. But you know, many times we just come casual, we don't even understand what is happening to us. So when the word is coming, when ministration is coming to us, just some of the things they are doing, they are breaking cedars. Say cedars. You know, you know when people say generational, you know, some people say go to mountains. They say generational causes. They don't see hunger as the generational causes. They don't see ability not to keep, not to keep covenant as a cause. You know, they just see that one that in our family don't do the father, but you know, there, there are causes. Say causes. What are causes? There are things that limit us from coming into the fullness of the things that God has for us. And so he said that the voice of the Lord breaks cedars, says cedars. So there are natures in us that actually limits us from coming to the Lord. So most time when we sit under administration, one of the things they do is that they begin to go after those things. It is the voice that I can break those things. Say break those things. Say yes, the Lord, he doesn't just break them. He says he does what? He splinters. You know what it means to splinter? You know that when you cut trees, you can just cut it down. But you know when you want to, when they say they want to dana, you know the way they cut it into small pieces. So they, they're not just cutting it down. They will, the voice of the Lord is able to break it down to splinters it. Say, so yes, the Lord splinters the cedar. So you see, big tree, something that looks so big. So this issue of corruption in man that makes man to fade, things that make man to corrupt, I believe the voice can splinter it. So as we sit under the economy of the world, the voice is able to splinter in corruption. The voice is able to splinter all things that defile. The voice is able to splinter all things that makes man fade away. Let's go on. Verse 6. It makes them also skip like a scarf. So you know, you know, see that, you know, see that they are, they are roots. Is really, really deep. So he said that it makes them, you know, if something skips like that, that means it can get them uprooted. It makes them stick like a rap. Lebanon and Syrian, like a young wild ox. Verse 7. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. You know, there are things that are in the souls of men that burn, things like lust. That burns a mind. He said that the voice of the Lord knows how to divide. You know, so, so, some of the things, some of the natures that we have. Anger. You know what? Anger can be like a flame. Jealousy. Anyway, you see somebody just doing well like this, something within you just begins. You can't control yourself. You know? Envy. All of these flames. Said the, the, the voice of the Lord, just sitting under the word, is able to divide the word. So the word of the Lord shakes the wilderness. Say wilderness. Yeah. You know, some souls are so barren, they, don't, they can't bring the fruit of the Spirit. They can't bring fruits of pleasure to the Lord. He's saying that such souls, when you come, you come barren, you don't have anything. These things of God are scarce in your life. The things pertaining to everlasting life are scarce in your life, but as you sit down under the word, he says the voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. Those things that make us unfruitful. In the works of righteousness, he shakes them. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The, vo the voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth. He brings fruitfulness. Say fruitfulness. fruitfulness. So as we stay under the economy of the world, one of the things that the world does to us is that he makes us a fruitful vine. Our soul becomes fruitful. Fruitful with the fruits of the spirits. Said And strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says what? Glory. 
So those are the things that happen to us under what? The economy of the world. Say under the economy of the world. Why am I saying all of this? So that we can value sitting down and hearing the word. And in this season, so that we don't, you know, now we are, God, Satan knows that I cannot tell you to go and be seeking God for other things. Now you want to seek God for who he is. But one of the things he also does is that we make you despise the word. It would make you not value the word. It would make you, and when you do that, you know what happens? Even though the word is there, it will not be of any benefit. So we have to know all of these things. What the word can do. What the voice, sitting under the economy of the word, hallowing that voice and paying attention and not allowing anything to distract us from his voice that is coming to us in this season. Amen. Amen. Let's look at Psalms, um, Song of Solomon chapter 2. Let's start from verse 3, I think. You know, I've been believing God for, um, I'm sorry, let me see a convenient place where we can start from. Verse, let's start from verse 8. Still about the voice, you know, and that is one thing you must, as people desiring God in this, that's one of the things you must, you, that must be your, your utmost cry. Always having that desire to want to hear God's voice, to want to hear his words, to want to hear what does God want to communicate to us again. So coming for Tuesday meetings, coming for Thursday meetings, coming for KCC, um, some of you that also have devotion in your house, those are avenues through which God communicates. And so you must not despise, say don't despise them. You must not despise those avenues through which God communicates, through which his voice comes to us to do all, all of those things that I have described. See, so the voice of my beloved, behold, he comes leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. You know, yeah, these mountains can serve as limitations, you know, and then you see, the, nothing, nothing can stop the voice of the Lord. That's how powerful God's voice is. He said, he comes leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills, verse 9. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. You know, a young stag is full of energy. Nothing can stop. It's very energetic, very fast. That's what a gazelle is. Say, behold, he stands behind our wall. You see, I'm believing God that in this season we begin to experience these operations. You no know, walls are things that stand as barrier between us and God. Veils. And here is the Lord coming. He's our beloved coming like a young stag irrespective of any limitation, coming and trying to reach out to his own. He said, he stands behind our wall. You know, even though there is a wall, he tries to look for an opportunity to still bring his voice. He said, he's looking through the windows. Though sometimes we shut the windows of our hearts to him. But yet, he will not stop. There is a wall. He sees that, okay, there is a wall here. Let me go and look for a window. He looks for a window. So sometimes when you come to Tuesday meeting, he doesn't reach you. It does there, it doesn't reach you then. I'm waiting for you in case you see to just pass something to you. So he said he's looking through the windows. Most likely the windows are gazed. Then he gazes through the lattice. You know, the lattice is just all those small, small crevices, you know, all those small spaces between windows. He said he gazes through the lattice. Verse 10. My beloved did what? Spoke and said to me, Rise up, my love my fair one, and come away. May we experience this in this season. You know, sometimes you have limitation, veils, mindset that does not allow us to receive the things. But see, one thing in Moses, it is, the, you know, as Pastor was just said, the Lord's desire is to the little flock. It's to see God's people. God wants to give them the kingdom. But, no, but sometimes there are veils, there are things that stop us. But he's always looking for every opportunity to communicate his heart. He said, rise up. And so, so it's, even though there were walls, even though there were windows, but he still found what? A lattice through which he can speak. He said, rise up, my love, my fair one, and do what? And come away. Verse 11. For lo, the winter is past. You know, during winter, what happens during winter? People stay indoors. There are no activities. You know, everybody is cold. They're just down there. You know, if I, during, naturally, during winter, there's a lot of depression. People are just down, a lot of inactivity. So he said that winter is past. You know, the, you know when the rain is, what happens during it? What people do again? They stay indoor. They're just there, no activity. So he's saying that by the, by the proclamation of his word, he's begun to bring a new season. A new season of, a new season of walk with the Lord. 
said the rain is over and gone. Verse 12. The flowers appear on the earth. Those flowers talk about, you know, we talk about flowers and glories and all that. The time of singing has come. And the voice of the turtle dove is heard where in our land. So the voice, the first communication of his voice to this beloved in this place, he began to relate things that she can, you know, began to the level of, you see, everything was expressing here were things, still things, you know, kind of related to the things that will steer her heart. So that, oh, if they had already flowers, oh, hard, then they're singing, oh, you know, like a fortress of the glory, trying to steer her so that she can rise up and then begin to follow. And that's the way God reaches to us. Many of you, if you see the way before God could reach you, it was through a lettuce. Some of it was, see, see you chased there. That was the lettuce. You know, say lettuce. You know, the way, the way God tries, and then he comes, and then he begins to say things, and those things begin like a fortress, and begin to stir your heart. Why? He just wants you to come with him. And then let's see the next verse, verse 13. The fig tree puts forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grapes give a good smell. You know, just trying to, you know, when, when, you are, when, you are, when you are stirring up, that's what the voice of the Lord does. You know, the voice of the Lord stirs up, it can stir up a heart, a very cold heart, a heart that is not ready to follow God, that is already getting weary. Maybe you are getting weary, you are getting tired somewhere. What you need is the voice. Say it's the voice. So the fig tree, so it's time to stir up the beloved. Said, so gives he gives a good smell. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Verse 14. Then he said, So that the first one, he began to describe all those things that will stir up the, you know, the everything here. Then I'm sure she got set up. Then he began to then he began to, to speak again. The, verse 13. Again, that same word I spoke in verse 8. Come up, say, come up, my love. Then he said, Oh my dove. This time around, not giving specific details in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the creek. Let me see your face. So, you know, so initially, we have words that are communicated to us to stay like a fortress. But ultimately, there's a place where God is taking us to. It's a place of face-to-face -face encounter. Say face-to-face -face encounter. With a voice. So he sends his word. And that voice is just to draw us. He said, in the secret places of the cliff, let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is what? Sweet. And your face is what? Lovely. May we encounter this in this season. So there is a lot that the voice sitting down under the economy of the Lord, you know, is just to so as we give ourselves to the world. So as many of us, you know, I know some people will be traveling, some people will be staying, we'll be staying here, you'll be streaming online. There is a lot the voice can do. Maybe you are already tired. Oh, I don't even have energy to do anything. You are in winter or maybe you are in the rainy season of your life. All you need is the voice. Say all I need is the voice. You know, some of you are in the winter season of your life. You are in the rainy season of your life. You don't even understand again. In fact, you feel like backsliding because Pastor Friday will not leave you. And all these cases, see people will not leave you. You need the voice. Say, I need the voice. Need the voice. So believe God in this season that the voice is going to turn down over your soul. Yeah. And that there will be staring. Say, staring. Yeah. These are things I'm believing God for in this season. I want him to stir me up and bring me to a place of face-to-face -face encounter with him where I begin to be all the things that pertains to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Those are the things that the voice can do. Amen. Amen. So we say we need the voice. Need the voice. So, what, so, and we must, you know, what, why am I saying all this? I'm saying all this so that we can place premium on the word. Say, lay premium on the word. You know, just like, you know, it, it takes some level of faith. So, you know, we were saying in Hebrews that the word did not mix with faith in their heart. So, the voice was coming to them. So, now said, in, in those of you that are in today, say today, today, if you hear his voice, do what? So, there is a today again where the voice of the Lord is speaking. And what is he communicating? He's communicating things that pertain to great salvation. Say, great salvation. So in this season when the Lord is, is communicating things that pertains to great salvation, we must lay premium on it. Our hearts must be open. Our hearts must be stirred up to come away with him. To want to follow him away. Was, you know that voice. So when he's, you know, it was just like, you know, when, when, the, when, when Peter saw Jesus walking on the water and he said, Master, you are walking on the water. And he said, bid me come. And, he, and the Lord said, 
come. I know he began to walk on the water. It was not walking on the water. It was that word. It was that word that became what? Like a, that created a tension that he could walk on. So these words that we are hearing, you know, and immediately he began to look at the winds. What happened? And he cried out, Lord save me. So what am I trying to say? You see, at the, at the, at the proclamation of his words, with his voice, there are things that are, that are possibilities in the spirit. Say possibilities in the spirit. Stirrings in our soul. Heights in the spirit. You know, I've just been, you know, over there I was just thinking, I was just imagining there are heights in the spirit though. There are things that we don't even yet know. You know, just like he was speaking to John. You know, when Nicodemus came to meet him and he said, except you be born again, that you cannot see the kingdom of God. Then he was asking him that, uh, will I enter my mother? So, you know what he said? He said, if I'm telling you earthly things and you cannot comprehend, what's the when I start telling you heavenly things? That means that there are earthly things and there are what? Heavenly things. So there are things that even now as we are, we don't yet know. And they are existing. In a realm. We need the, say we need the voice. We need the voice to steer us up and take us to that place, in that cleft, where we can see him face to face, where we can partake of his things. Amen. Let's look at John chapter 5, verse 25. See, one of the things that the voice also does is that the voice makes alive. Say, the voice makes alive. How many of you are experiencing You are just down. You know, that's like me. You know, you know, it is, it is um, Satan that will cheat you. Maybe you are feeling down. You are feeling depressed. You are not feeling happy. You know, you are feeling discouraged. And Satan will say, don't, we don't even go there. Just stay. It is, it is adding <laughs> salt to the injury. How many of you have felt so down sometimes? Then you come to, you come for meeting or you go for KCC. Or maybe just have devotion. And then there is a word and you just get stirred up. Yeah. That's the void resurrecting you. Say, so very, very, I say unto the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall do what? Hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall what? Believe. So that's the way we live, oh. We live by hearing. Say, we live by hearing. Believe. When you stop hearing, you stop doing what? Living. So you want to keep living, you want to keep accumulating life, say, keep hearing. Believe. You cannot afford to joke with the world because Babylon is not joking, it keeps sitting on the waters. So you must keep saying, now I want to change location. I want to sit under the voice of the Lord. Say, sitting under the voice. Say, staying under the economy of the voice. I know he said, God, God in, in time past has spoken to us in diverse manners, spoken to us. Through. So I said, but in this day, and he's, this, he's, he's speaking through what? Through his son. Say, through his son. So you will say that things pertaining to the son of the living God and eternal life is being communicated to us. This is a great season. It is a season where things containing great salvation is being coming. And so it's a season whereby we must sit under what? The voice. I'm saying these things because it happened to some people. Say so those things were written for our examples. Say so they heard those things that they did not mix with faith in their heart. Say so therefore today if you hear his voice, do what? Do what? I did not your heart. Say tell them, but say stay under the voice. You must keep hearing. Don't tell me how to this today. Um, Monday, um, Zoteria. Tuesday, uh, Tata will come. You come and discuss it. Wednesday, uh, technical unit meeting. Thursday, fr Friday, Saturday, so Sanctuary meeting. So, uh, and it's yes. Sunday again, we come. We finish at 3 o'clock, everlasting church. And you know, you don't even have any time for yourself. Your time, time is for seeking God. Yes. Have you ever thought about it that the reason why you are on this side, eh? And the reason why I am on this side, say the reason why I'm on this side, is because of God. It's because God ordained something. The highest pursuit of a man is to lay hold on God. So the gift of time was given to you, not for you. It is for you to acquire God. And you shouldn't return back to your, to your maker empty-handed. Why should you return to your maker with only car? In fact, your car cannot cross self. Your career cannot, because I'm not having time for my career. Oh, mom, the, day, the day you leave this jacket like this, career hands here. They're not going to hack you in heaven. Oh, all doctors move to this side. All engineers, how much did you progress? It's good to do well here. Oh. You know, we said we should use those things, but we should not abuse them. Saying, you know, we talked about all those things on Saturday, but we must know, to, we must know how to set our priorities. Down. So you know, just like, like um, um, those guys said in Psalm, they said, if David said, if I do not make you above my chiefest joy. So that means there was something that was the chiefest joy. But he said, above that chiefest joy. You know, we all have things that excite us. Is it a lie? 
Some of it is business. What is business about Buria and machine? All your neurons will open. Some of it is sports. You know, some of it is just career. I can't say, I can run be happiness by the prof that opens their brain. You know, but God said that all said above your he said I, you must those, God must be so if I do not remember the let my tongue cleave to the roof of my tongue. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my what? So we can have chief joy. God is not saying no have chief joy, but he's saying that I must be above your chief joy. Yeah. And so in this season, say in this season, say we must stay under the economy of the voice. So the voice is coming. Repeated the fact we should be thanking God that it is increasing. Our meetings are going longer. Youth meetings are going longer. You know, at some time, even me too, not because I don't like the word though, but because I used to pity some of you. Even I'll be here. Ha, Pastor Titi Fagun Leni. You know, I'll be trying to press break in the spirit. But you know, at some time I began to see that it was not, it's not, it's not as if someone just wants to. Put it. Sometimes you just see it's God's presence. You know, in the, in the, in the season we are coming, God is not just doing something that will just come and just go. He's bringing things and He's taking time to baptize us in those things. And so we cannot say we want Him and not want His. I know when they come, they don't know time. That's one thing about them. No one thing, you know, if you want God, if you want spirit meetings, when you come to me, you don't know time. So, you can't detect spirit meetings. When, when it's the spirit meetings, they take their time. Knowing that they don't know time. So, the day is just like a thousand years, like what? So, when we are spent, when we spend, so you to calculate it, those are mathematicians. But Akuti, when we spend five hours in church, I could tell you to be one second. So, when she spent the Luba. So, just be like, you know, one people, what's wrong with all these people now? You just only spent maybe maybe one thousand milliseconds as far as they are concerned. I don't know. But you know what the funniest thing? We resume work at eight o'clock and we leave five and we don't complain. That is death. We don't complain. Eight to five. We just we feel it is what? It is not. No, eight to five is what? Normal. So if you start to read church eight to five, let me say, ah. Eight to five church. What, what time do you start your church? Eight o'clock. What time do you finish? Ah, ah. To people that doesn't look normal. But if you say you are going to work eight o'clock, say you are coming back five. Does it? Uh, that's for natural things. Of, but for the things of the spirit, she moye, she has corruption has done her soul. For them to uproot it, it will take time. Say it will take time. So when these spirits come, they just oh, don't be angry. Oh. They, I want you. Oh. They just suspend time. When they call. So the more spirit meetings we have, the more time is what? Suspended. So that's why they will just keep stretching the thing. So as the economy of the world increases, be ready. When Moses was going, when God said, come up to the mountains, I want to give you um, whatever. How many days did he spend there? I'm sure he just thought it was something like, um, Zipora. Pandadian uh, fell at Osiki. I'm coming. Um, father said I should come. I just I want to quickly go and see him. I'm coming now. I'm sure I've been cooking. Ah, one day, two days, three days, four days, five days. Ah, one week, two weeks, three weeks, eh? Four weeks. Hey. Until it became what? Forty days. But you know that when that happened, it was in the giving of things that, com that pertains to God's commandment. Yes. That pertains to the law. So in the season when they will be giving things that pertains to the law, it will take time. Yes. Am I a cat and rawaje? Tell your neighbor, say it will take time. Yes. It's, and it's good to understand this. Season. So they not be getting angry. I not be pressing break. <laughs> so that you allow the flow of the spirit. Yes. Say it will take time. Yes. So most like it is possible. You know this one that we are going for convention seven days. Come on, the one day take me. We go for seven days and then. You know that was what happened in, in during Pentecost. People came for. You know Pentecost was like this. This way we are going for convention. That was, uh, you know, was a feast that God ordained for them. It was an annual feast, and then they just went for the annual feast, and then Pentecost came. I know that some of them they could not return back 
to their whatever. You just continue like that. Great days are upon us. And we should be ready. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? And so we must give ourselves to this economy. Say, give ourselves to this economy. So in the day when the son, when the Lord is speaking to us through his son, when he's bringing all these mysteries of the kingdom to us, he is the day when he wants to give us the kingdom. He is the day when they want to give themselves. And when they want to give themselves, you know when God was giving Moses the commandments, he was giving things that pertains to them. He took a long time. 40 days. And by the time he came back, what happened? He said his face was literally doing what? Glowing. Was glowing. As in, that they could not even look at him. He had to put what? A veil. So you can't, the truth of the matter is that what am I trying to say? You can't spend time under the economy of the voice that is speaking in this day and remain the same. Say, I'm not remaining the same. I'm telling you, you can't remain the same. There is something as you stay. When you stay under the economy of the voice, with a voice that is communicating his commandment and his law, there is something happening to you. There is something changing. There is something about them that they are giving to you. And that alters you from within. Say alteration from within. If you spend enough time, say spend enough time. If you spend enough time, the thing will it will it will come out. You know, if you had maybe if you had stopped maybe second day or third day, you might not have had. No, but the more the more attention, the more the intensity, the more the work of transformation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The mono ho fraste monia. Alina manglenda po prosti vela na hatia. It's my desire to bring you to my mountain. We have right laws in your heart. It's my desire to bring you to my mountain. Where I will open things to you. It's my desire to bring you to a place where you will not be hasty, where you would stay where you will stay, where you will stay. It's my desire. I prepare you to bring you up to my mountain. I prepare you to bring you up to my mountain. A hasty soul cannot stay with me on my mountain. A soul that is hasty, a soul that runs helter skelter cannot stay on my mountain. I prepare you so you can stay, so you can stay, so you can stay. My mountain is a place I want you to rest. I want you to rest and feed upon my mountain. I want you to rest and feed upon my mountain. See, the Lord Satan has trained men. They are not patient with me. They are not patient with me. So I could not do work in them that will last. I want to do work in you that will last. I want to do work in you that is forever. I want to do work in you that is everlasting. I need time. I need time. Stay with me to do deep work in your heart. Stay with me to do deep work in your heart. I want to chisel into your heart and put everlasting laws. See the world. Amen. You know, when Pastor Friday, when he was they teaching us on Thursday, he said something. He said, Satan has gone ahead to do certain things in our soul that will make souls difficult to receive what? The incorruptible seed. One of the things is hastiness. A typical normal soul. He's very hasty. Likes hustling. It's difficult for a soul to just stay and just be at rest. It will be uncomfortable. But you know what the great shepherd wants to do for us? The first thing, you know, if Psalm 23 said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In the, in the, first, in the first training they do for a sheep is to teach that sheep how to lie down. He said he make it. You know, he did not say he would lie. 
he will do a work of making. They will make you to do what? Lie. Lie. No lie. You will lie what? Down. Say down. down. <laughs> they will make you lie down. So that work of lying down, of being at rest, it is a making. So the first thing, they, when they are working on your soul, one of the things they will do, they will take away haste. Ability to just stay. And just stay there. And God just say, just wait on me. So if someone that doesn't like waiting on God, you, it is a, it is, you cannot receive God. They can't do so much in you. You know, they can't, they can't, they can't, there are certain things that they can't, before they begin to even begin to lead you be, beside still waters, they first of all have to teach you how to do what? Lie down. Say lie down. Yeah. And just stay in his presence. And just lie down and just wait for him. You know, just like um, Samuel, when he heard the voice and he went to um, Eli, he thought it was Eli. You know what Eli said? He said he should go back and do what? I can't hear you. Go back and do what? Yeah. That's one of the things. The voice, first of all, that this voice that is coming. You first, some of you, you have been disarmed. and like, ah, my life was better than this before I started hearing this word. No, it was not better. They just started work. They are disarming you. I'm teaching you how to do what? Lie down. Do you, if, those of you that have toddlers, people like uh, uh, Mr. Prouded, Akogs, Akogun, <laughs> try to make him just sit down in one place. He, will be, he can be crying. They are like that. Our soul is like that. Just like it's going. Oh, fair law, fair law, bye. Good law, bye. Good law. And God is saying, <coughs> just sit down. Sit down, doing, we can first sit down. Maybe if telling him, sit down. After like one, that second, you put like one leg down like this. You say, put back your leg. You say, we are sitting again. You see him. Next thing, he's touching somebody in front, touching person. Say, and before you know, you just stumble. And when you try to fall, you just cry. Many of us are like that. But you see, they can't even lead us beside those still waters. These still waters are living waters and everlasting water. They can't, they can't lead us even to waters until they are, first of all, make. Say make. make. That making for some people can take five years, ten years. Some people be going to share my Paris, it's my crossover. It's just working on their soul to make them do what? Lie down. No, this way that you know, I've been talking to people that are going, I've taken my leave. They say, hey, what are you using your leave for? We have convention. Hey, how many days? Seven days. Hey, how much want to use all your <sighs> they can't even fathom it. Now you're here. So what we'll be doing there, well, we just sit down, we hear word in the morning, we eat, then we come back, we hear we're here. We just be hearing for how long? How many hours? I say, no, that no, it's not, it's not fiesta. You know some people that they have jamboree, they have plenty of things. They will even have leadership and business class in the meeting of the convention, political class. But this one no, is pure word. Say lie down. Lie down. Tell them, but say lie down. lie down. So some of you that is as if your 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 life, ah, you know, you're crying. I don't even pass off right. I can't even understand. It's as if my life is on the pause. Yes, you are in the making of lying down. Yeah. You are in the right course. Say I'm on the right course. Right it's as if everything is not working. You no, know, when you are lying down, nothing is working. You know, there is no action. No action there, but there is action that they are doing. They are preparing you for the next application to be able to take the still waters. And so, we want, I believe God that in this season, God will give us the grace to lie down. Yeah. Under the economy of this, of this voice. That we have the patience to stay and wait. And wait on him, not just like, like Mary. You know, when Martha was running around, Martha was busy cooking, was doing that. It's not bad that Jesus should eat now. You know, we thought our sister they should be hospitable. But no, it's not bad. But you know, she knew the value that this Jesus, he will not always be with me. He said, he said, Mary has chosen the most important thing, which is what? To sit down. Sit down. Sit down. No, that's one of the things church cannot do. Any church, what's it? Gumba and Nirerombe. Go and check all. Go and check most most big churches. How long do they stay in church? Go and check. Go and go. Don't be that in research. Go and check. What is the average hours of general churches out there? And that's why we have. We cannot have. We cannot have better believers than that. You know, we cannot have better. We cannot have better products. We cannot have better. Ah, it is what you give in that we bring out now. Uh, what's this you buy? In contact, you buy there. <laughs> it's what let me say for those that don't understand about it's whatever the bed hits that we help it they help the bed to do what to fly. So when you say ah and you call yourself a Christian, no, she did not call herself a Christian. That is what we are making them. 
But the narrative is changing. Yeah. Say the narrative is changing. Yeah. Many people in this season are going up to the mountain of the Lord to go and do what? Learn his ways. Say learn his ways. Yeah. Come on, rise up on your feet. And I want you to just thank, first of all, thank God for the grace he's given us in this season to hear his voice. Thank him for the workings in your soul, for making you to lie down. You know, many of us, we don't thank God for making us to lie down. They put you in chains. Some of you want to go, but they have put chains. I want you to thank him for those chains, for the processes of making you to lie down, to hear this voice, for making you to lie down, to stay under the economy of his voice. I want you to thank him for God bringing you to this part, for him shepherding you to this point where he is making, where you are in the process of making so that you can lie down, so that you can begin to partake of all the allocations and the blessings that are in him. Father, I thank you. Thank you for this great privilege. Thank you for the chance. Thank you for the disappointment, for those things that I counted as disappointment. Thank you for those things that I counted as denial. Thank you for those things that I counted as suffering. Thank you for those things that I even thought it was Satan. Thank you for all of those things, for they were the processes of making me to lie down so that I can partake of your living waters. Thank you for those prayers you did not answer and that made me cry, not knowing that it was for my salvation. Thank you. Thank you for the ones that did not even pray about, but God you brought across my way as a process of making me to lie down thank you for chatting this course for me thank you my father for bringing me to this path and for putting your yoke on me say that of me for your meek and lowly say take upon me your yoke thank you for putting your yoke upon me so that I can learn so that I can learn so that I can learn thank you for your yoke thank you can you thank him for the yoke can you thank him for the yoke without the yoke we cannot learn his ways without the yoke we cannot learn his way of meekness and lowliness thank him for the yoke thank him for putting his yoke upon us thank him for the chains thank him for making you lie down thank you thank him thank him for thy faith Thank you. I thank you. Thank you for those days when you were silent. Thank you for those days when everything seems bleak. And but God, you carried me on your hands and you chatted me in the path and you put your yoke upon me so that I can receive your word, so that I can go through your training and come to a place of finding rest. Thank you, my father. Thank you for orchestrating my path in this path of righteousness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your yoke. Thank you for the chains. I glory in my chains. I glory in my infirmities. I glory in my tribulations. I glory, I glory, I glory, I glory in the process of making me lie down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your voice. 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 Thank you for the economy of your voice. Thank you for your voice. Thank you for the many, 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 many words. Thank you. Father, we thank you. I thank you. I thank you for the chastisement. I thank you for the disciplines. I thank you for teaching me to walk in faith. For I used to be a soul that used to be faithful. But God, you have fed me and you are taking away fears. Now I can lift up my eyes and trust you and believe you and have faith in you. Even when I cannot see, I can trust your grace. I can trust your loving kindness. Thank you. I can trust in your word. Even when things around me do not seem fruitful, when things are not blossoming around me in the natural, Lord, thank you for teaching me to live by faith. For you said the church shall live by faith. Thank you for making me to see, to see, to see things that are far more than those natural things. For making me to trust in your word. It is not, it's a miracle. It's a miracle you've done in my soul to trust you, to trust you, to trust you. Even in the morning furnace to trust you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for helping me to despise the pleasures of Egypt. Thank you. And to associate with the sufferings of your people. Thank you, my Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord.
I will give God thanks this morning. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you glory, Jesus. Thank you. Let's just appreciate the Lord this morning. Let's just thank him. Lift up your hands and give him thanks. The Lord is stirring our hearts and just uh, granting us grace to yield ourselves more. Lord, we thank you for mercy. We thank you for your mercies. Thank you for causing us to find mercies every morning. Thank you because you have chosen to visit this generation. We give you thanks, our Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for hearts that are responding to your love. We give you thanks. We thank you for touching our hearts deeply. We thank you for great things that you are already doing in us and through us. We give you thanks. We are grateful, God. We are grateful. We thank you for conversions. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We'll give you thanks and praises. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have our saints in God's wonderful presence. Amen. Can we appreciate mommy? Um, for, amen. For exhorting us. That was more of an exhortation just to prepare our hands for the season, but much more for um, Believers Convention that will begin in this evening. Um, I want us to pay attention to some of the things she said. Um, it's a massive meeting. We all know that um, um, a lot of people will be there physically. Uh, but I, I want us to be very focused. Okay? Um, let's be very focused and let's make the meeting count. Uh, while she was, you know, touching all the things that uh, could help you to minimize distraction, I just perceived that I should also add that um, don't allow the enemy to accuse anyone in your heart. I just felt I needed to say that. Oh, that's what spirits do. Uh, you know, how many of you know that spirits talk to us? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, they start whispering to you accusing your brethren you know, in your heart, accusing your leaders in your heart, accusing even the ministers that come to minister in your heart. Um, you, don't, you don't know why at times, but that's their work. And that's what they do to steal people's ability to receive blessing. Yes. Um, I like, I appreciate Pastor Friday's teaching on Thursday when he taught the parable of the sower. Uh, I think I've always, I think I've said before that that parable of the sower is a parable within the kingdom environment. All of those people, they are not people for without. They are people within. It's a kingdom environment. The heart that is um, by the wayside, the heart that has stone, the heart that has stones, they are all, they are, that's just the, the, how would I put it? The summary of our hearts. Huh? It's very fearful. That's, that's a message. I, I remember the Lord told me that the, the, that parable is the chief of all parables. I think it's even in scripture. It's the chief of all parables. That it was, it's not just the first parable. It's the chief of all parables. The parable of the sower. Yes, it's the chief of all parables. All the parables that Jesus taught. I think there was a time in church we taught almost all the parables. I've done the parables of Christ. Then it was more in the, with the light of Christ. Maybe about... Eight, eight years ago, we were checking one of the, all the parables. But I remember that the Lord told me that that parable of the sower, the pastor taught us on, um, on Thursday, is the chief. Because it's the one that really summarizes our, our, our journey into God. So I feel I need to add that, um, that we need to be very careful. Because a lot of spirits, spirits work a lot in kingdom environment. That's where they really work. They work around the environment. Uh, and if as some people already, they, as you are going, work on your, because some people have been deactivated already, even before they go to the meeting, yes. Their heart is not even right. Uh, so, you know, we, it's good to say this so that you can start praying 
um, and, and trusting the Lord for your hand to be aligned. For instance, if you are walking in unforgiveness, you can't be blessed. There's no way that you'll be blessed. If you have grudges in your heart with someone, well, you know, we don't look into those areas. You know, we are going to seek away, but you still have grudges. Those are areas you need to check. If you have grudges with someone, you can access certain blessings in the spirit. You have to resolve those things quickly. Don't let them move beyond this four-wall auditorium. Quickly resolve them. You know, grudges, um, how will I put it, prejudice, uh, offense. Uh, okay? Those are what spirits do that creates what I call stumbling block. Can we say amen? amen. Uh, so, at times, you just find out that, you know, when you're in th that kind of atmosphere, you'll find it difficult to connect quickly. You know, you just find out that what's happening to you, what is happening to you is that the heart has been deactivated, okay, by spirits. They do that a lot. And so, I just want you to be wise, okay? So, as you are um, moving physically to the meeting, let your heart also journey spiritually, Okay, it's not just a physical journey. It's supposed to be a spiritual journey. I think one of the, uh, because I took time also myself to fall back on some of the messages during the prayer meeting. I couldn't follow them um, while some of them were taught. I followed some. I went, I had to go back. It was also part of my own preparation. Even though, you know, um, um, uh, I may be ministering, but that, that does not still mean that I should not, you know, also join in the preparation. So I had to fall back on a lot of messages. Yes, I had to. And one of the things, I think I heard one of the tongues that, um, that um, there will be a lot of visitation from Angel Michael that has been happening. And the, the plan is that it's going to take many people up. And so how many of you want to be taken up? Uh, I want to be taken up. I've been praying for myself also. I was somebody who ministered a word to me particularly for this meeting. You understand? that there are certain things that God will do. So, me too. I'm praying. I want mercy, okay? That God will visit me. I'm saying all these things so that we can approach this meeting well. Okay, let's have that. Pastor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's the power of the throne at work. Yeah. It's the power of the throne at work. It's the power even from the mercy seat at work. It's the power of the throne. It's the power of the throne. It's the power of the throne. It's the season of mercy. It's the season of mercy. A generation, your generation, he has found mercy. It's a season of mercy. There will be mercy ministrations. Amen. There will be mercy ministrations. Mercy of God will take many up. Mercy of God will help many to come up. Mercy will be communicated. Mercy will be ministered. Mercy will be ministered. The throne will come with yes. his force. Yes. The throne will come with his force yes. to disengage many to take yes. them up. It's the force of the throne. It's the force of the throne. Spirit of the throne. Spirit of the throne. Spirit of the throne. Spirit of the throne. They want to take many up. They want to take many up. It's an oath God has sworn to take many up. Dear the Lord. You know, the Okay, let's have that, Pastor. Oh, it's my desire 
Lord, I show you things that can't stop you. I show you things that can't stop you. I show you things that can't stop you. Let go of them. Let go of them. Let go of them. Detach yourself from them. Even now is not yet late. Even now is not yet late. Let go of them. Stop striving. Forgive. Release you. Check your heart. 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 Prepare your heart. Check your heart. Check your heart. Check strive. Check envy. Check things of the heart. It's the sins of the heart. It's the sins of the heart. Is the sins of the heart can't stop you. The sins in the heart can't stop you. The sins of the heart can't stop you. Your thoughts even towards another. Check it. Check it. Check it. Prepare. Prepare heart. It's a heart preparation. Prepare heart. Prepare heart. Prepare heart. Prepare your heart. For I come. See the Lord. You know, the, 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 the administration of the throne is actually an, is the administration of mercy. And that is actually... Um, that's the that's that's God ministration. God ministering with eternal, with eternal blessing, and God also ministering with everlasting blessing. And the hack of the covenant is both everlasting and eternal. It has woods that are made from sheeting woods, like I've said, we have said it before, sitting or kaya. They are wood that represent God's work. In fact, they are even carved. So, they get trees from Achaia and then they process them into that hack that we know and they now, they now overlay it with gold. Then we now have the message that is purely gold. So, we understand that it's from the carved wood that you connect the message. Okay? So, so the administration of the throne is both the administration of the work of God and the mercy of God. Okay? The work of God or the carved work of God is the nature of God being carved in the soul. And you know, understand that the way scripture puts it, they said that it is overlaid with gold. I like the word overlaid with gold. Yes, that is, that's the, it will take an everlasting work to be overlaid with the gold. That gold represents, you know, eternal life. Okay? So it is that gold on the sheeting wood that connects the, the, the gold of the mercy seat that is purely gold. So I am expecting things of God's throne to come to us. Can we say amen? amen. Um, okay, uh, one of the prayer points, or during the time we're praying for Beacon in July, um, one of the prayer, during the days of the prayer, um, the prophecy of late Reverend Kennedy again, um, during the camp meeting in 1988 was brought forth. The reason is because that particular prophecy had to do with the visitation of the Archangel Michael and the bringing of things that are majestic. Can we say majestic? majestic. Yes, they are things that pertain to God. Okay, um, we are in, actually in that season where things of God will gradually be brought um, into the earth. A lot of things are actually happening in the airspace, unknown to many. There's a lot of war in the spirit um, concerning things of God being made known to men. Uh, so, we may be looking at um, the general body of Christ and think there is no progress, but there's a lot of progress. Can we say amen? When, when I mean progress, concerning the matters of God or matters of great importance. These matters of great importance, they are gradually coming or being shaped through doctrine. Okay? Um, and we'll, we are already bearing witness to them. So, I want us to give God maximum attention. What did I say? You are not talking to me. I am not hearing you. You know, during the era of the, the Pentecostal charismatic revival, if you study the attention span of the world, you actually be very challenged. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons why God caught some covenant with those men. The men that led the church, that's, they are still leading the church up to now. 
God put them there as gatekeepers and witnesses of that truth. Uh, I shared, there was a video I shared on the family page of Daddy Adeboye and Daddy Kumuyi going for a conference in Kenya and stealing time away to read the Bible and they, they finished the same time. You now notice, look at them. You know those two men are standing. Yes, sir. Uh, they have caught covenant with God. You know, the reason is that I want to bring out a point. Those men paid attention to God. To what God brought in their day. They paid attention. They paid attention to it and they caught covenant with it and they are standing. Can we say amen? amen. So brethren, we need to pay attention. Uh, you know, we will need more grace because naturally, our generation, we are weak. We are easily distracted. You know, it's possible that even while administration is going on, you are funding with your phone. You know, just, just in the midst of every stuff, <laughs> things of the truth, something just pop over your phone that that takes away for five minutes. Uh, am I lying? Very easy. We are easily, our, our, our attention span is so little. So little. Eh? Things easily distract us. Uh, so, but I'm saying this so that you are consciously guarding your heart. That you are going to make up your mind to give a lot of... I want you to be ready to catch. One of the things God told me, you know, is that if you see me... Ah. Yes, that's one of the words. So I've been praying that I want to see God. And I know what that meant. Yeah. I know, you know, at times when God speaks to you, a whole, a whole bundle of uh, understanding opens. He was referring to Elisha. You know, so and I understood that. <laughs> of course, you know that Elisha's preparation to see Eli Elijah Cotter did not begin that day. <laughs> That's the bad word. But the, the most important thing was again, the dropping of that mantle was going to come through a difficult way. I think Elijah says this is an acting. Even Elijah says so. Can we look at that scripture? To be Second Kings. So we'll just use it to round up. Yes, Second uh, Kings chapter 2. Let's start from the first three verses, then we'll read down. Uh, of course, we know that, amen, there's one thing I want to say, every of those prophets knew that Elijah would be taken. So, you can, we can all know the season. Does not mean we all express the same thing. So, I, and I saw another video of Daddy Adeboye again yesterday. I wanted to type it and send it on the family page. Where he also went to Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1979. And they all went, you know, he didn't mention names, but I knew he went also in a company of other men that may be fathers also in their own right. And he said that they all planned to see Baba again. And they were giving just 15 minutes. And he said, that's okay. And then many people got there and they were asking, what do you want? The one said he wants to distribute against books. Once he wants to do, okay, you were the one that shared it. Somebody, one of you shared it, I can't remember. You, somebody said tapes and all that. So again, Baba called people. So yeah, this one said he wants tape, give him tape. This one said he wants magazine, give him magazine. This one said he wants book, give him book. Oh yeah, let everybody leave the office. This one, so they now ask Baba, they say, what do you want? He said, I want, I want everything that is in you. So they drove the other ones out. <laughs> and... Higgins prayed for him. He said the only thing he remembered was that Baba laid his hands. He met himself on the floor. He said by the time he opened his eyes, he saw Kenny again leaning down and praying for him furiously. He now asked people, what do you want? You know, so um, there has to be a very deep desire in your heart to catch certain things in the spirit. If not, it can just be another trip. Yes. It can just be another, just another good Christian trip. You know, we can have a Christian trip, you know. But I don't want it, for us as a local church, I don't want it to be. Many of us are going this year. Uh, let, you know, if we all catch something, you know, it's for, you know we are all moving forward. Uh, it's, it, let us all catch. It will be easier for us. It means that the whole assembly is shifting. Okay? Uh -huh. So it came to pass that when they were gone over. No, 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 no. No, start from the first three verses. When it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a wild wind, Elijah went from 
with Elisha from Gilgal, verse 2. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. You know, the Lord at times will put, it's not Satan, no. It's the Lord trying to test how, how far you could go with him. It's, God is not put limitation just to check out. Okay? And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Verse 3. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that thy Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. So it was a general information. There were, there were all prophets that could discern that the season for Elijah to be taken was at hand. But they couldn't pay the price. If I many were not even, could not have even known what was going to, what transaction will happen if Elijah will be taken. Many of them were not even, but I'm sure they were not interested in his mantle. They just want to prophesy, Abby. So, or they want to share. Whichever way. But, but, you know, how did Elijah know? How did Elisha know that something can drop? That this, Baba, you go to the last one. You know that kind of thing? Uh, so, now the point is that take me when Elisha asked um, Elijah. And it came to pass that when they had gone over. Then Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask, what shall I do for you? Look, I remember, they had journeyed before he asked, okay, so what do you want? So did he, did he ask him the question where they were at Bethel? I think I've taught this also before. I, I, I taught it, even the different meanings, what they mean. Um, so he did ask him. So after he has, he has they crossed Jordan. I think they have crossed Jordan, yeah. It was after Jordan that he now asked him. You know, Jordan represents dissension. It's a place of descent. It's a place of death. So after they went through Jordan, Elijah now said that this guy must be serious. And it came to pass that when they had gone, Elijah said unto Elijah, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elijah said, I pray thee a double portion of thy spirit upon me. That double portion is not um, more than Elijah. Elijah didn't have more than Elijah. The double portion is the portion for the firstborn. Okay? Um, it's good that we say this because some may not be aware. Uh, if Elijah can take double portion, how many portions do you think... El if Elisha takes double portion, how many portions do you think Elijah had? Elijah was like God. He was like... He had, he had portions that we do not even know. So, you know the way inheritance is being divided. It's divided... Uh, it's not divided equally. The firstborn takes twice. It takes double of all the inheritance. So he was asking for the inheritance of the first. Can we say amen? This is like a son of God. And so Elisha said, I pray thee, let the double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. So I know that there are things in God that it is hard to get. You have asked a hard thing. Okay? Because this one, to get it, uh, you need some, some kind of uh, help from God itself. So he said, you have had the hard thing. Nevertheless, meaning it's hard, but it's not impossible. Can we say that? Come on, let's say it again. That's why it says, nevertheless. You have asked a hard thing, but nevertheless, if thou, there's, it's inched on a condition, uh, so that's the word the Lord whispered in my heart, if you can see me. So I understand that. So I'll be praying that God will help me see him. It means that everything that will be fighting me or fighting us is for us not to see. Uh, if thou will see me when I am taken from thee, then it shall be, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be. So, you know, if they tell you this guy, you know, the kind of attention. Uh, because you, you know, some people, they have favorite preachers. That's number one distraction. 
Because at times, it may be through maybe, like, I, don't, I don't know. Let me just use that as an example. Um, when you are in this order, please, don't have favorites. We should all know the ministers according to the grace they carry. It may be maybe a Mama Akinola. Somebody that you not think of. There's this uh, mama that comes from Mama Oko. I'm not, I'm not sure if she's coming this year. You know, at times when you just hear somebody preach, at times you go and do what you feel you should, that is important. And maybe that's the time that sight will be granted. You just miss it. Because of a heart that is not wise. Our own descending heart. How many of you hear what I'm saying? I'm saying this so that you prioritize every session. You look forward. You relate with every minister as angels of God. Uh, that they are bringing blessing and your heart is opened because you don't know when it shall be. Uh, cast your bread upon many waters. Uh, there's one, one scripture that says, give something to eight, another to nine. I forgot. Is it like Ecclesiastes? <laughs> Only God knows where Solomon was writing those things. Only God knows what was in his heart. Because you don't know which one we this one that we yield. In other words, be opened. Uh, it's not this one. It, yes, thank you. Aha. Uh -huh. Cast thy bread upon many waters. Uh, for thou shalt find it after me. Give a portion to seven and also to eight. For, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon it. You know, he's just trying to talk about. Uh, you don't know. Give. Give. Give rapt attention to every session. That's what I want to say. Every session. Let your hearts be open because you don't know the one that will, will say something that will even be your deliverance. Maybe something you have been struggling with for a long time. Somebody's statement can just free you. Hallelujah. Amen. So, it's not impossible eh, to see God. Can we all say that? Come on, what did I say? What did I say? But at times it can be hard. Eh? You know, I don't, I don't know if you are getting me. It can be hard to come into certain sight in the spirit. So I want you to be all prayed up. Uh, give attention. Be arranged. Be ready. You are not going there. Uh, you are going, it's like you are going on a or into a boot camp. It's a seven-day camp meeting. Okay? So you may not sleep. It's not your house uh, where you can spread and roll on the, on the bed the way you want. If you roll too much, you'll find out yourself on the floor. Uh, you understand? Uh -huh. And at times, they may not give you attention the way you want. It's not your house. And at times, they may give, in your mind, they may give some other people more attention. You say, are we second-class citizens? You know, you know the way the soul is. You already go there. You're already seen that's what you have sight for. You must have sight for truth. Yeah. When they are dividing doctrine, you should have sight for that. Yeah. Not have sight that they are giving some people food. They are not giving some people food. You know those kind of things? You know, that's wrong sight. Uh, you know, you, are, you, are, you should be so joyous that you are drunk. Yeah. You know, when you are drunk, you don't see some things. Yeah. You don't see, you don't see the the, the limitations physically that you may have to go through, you are just, you just want to see. So that's the word the Lord gave me. I'm sharing it because I don't think it's just a personal word. The Lord says, if you can see me. So I want to see the Lord. Amen. You know, when you see the Lord, something will drop upon you. Uh, so I'm praying that we'll all come back with garments. Yeah. Come back with garments. Amen. And uh, not to discourage those that will be streaming online. Uh, you have to do more. You know, you have to do more. I want to beg you that if you are not going to be physically around at the meeting, make sure that you pay the price. Uh, when you are walking, walk like you are there in your soul. If you can get time off work, um, um, when I mean time off work, if, you're, if you can... If your bosses understand, you can, you can plug your ear and work. If they permit you, why not? Okay? While the message is going on, you can plug. Just make sure you follow. Don't think you, don't think you can just allow this one to go and then you catch up. You may, <laughs> it may take you time to catch up. 
You know, there are some flights when some people have, have, have taken ascension. If you're going to catch up, it may take you a while. Okay? So I want you to be determined uh, to stream. And if you need to go and stay in a brethren's house, um, I know most people are going, sleep over the night so that you can stream late into the night. It's likely that we have, I just sense that we'll have late night ministrations a lot. You know, I, I, well, I, let me not say I hope I'm wrong, but I sense that we're going to have it. Okay? One, uh, maybe 1, 12, 30 and all that. So, so you can plan together to stay in a brother's house. You can stream, sleep, first thing in the morning, wake up, go to your house, or go to work. Maybe you have already gotten ready for that. The Lord will help us. Uh, Pastor, do we have any other announcements? Okay, yes. We have service team retreat next two weeks. Can we project that um, from a whole week? From 24th to... Can we appreciate the Lord? Now, last day was strictly for workers in church, but this time around, we're going to make it open. Um, so, uh, because we are not much, so everybody should come uh, um, and be blessed. The Lord will be speaking profoundly to this house in this meeting. Uh, I trust that, um, that the, we must attend. Many things, I'm sure, will be clear. So, let's prepare for that.